Hello StarCraft 2 fans, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. This is going to be the next game of our series. It's a best of five between our Zerg and Protoss players, sort of, and Liquid Mana. So, Mana spawning here as the Red Protoss, bottom left hand side of Orbital Shipyard. And he's representing both Team Liquid and Poland. His opponent, sort of, is representing Team Property and Sweden, and he is the, the Blue Zerg up on the top right hand side. So if you haven't seen the previous videos, of course, I really suggest clicking on the description in the, uh, the the links in the description below, where you'll be able to be to be brought back to the first three games that you have already missed. Otherwise, you will be at a bit of a, a disadvantage. So the spoilers are coming. So please click on those links if you haven't seen those games yet. So our question of the series is: If you could buff one unit, which unit would that be? Leave your comments in the comment section below. I'm hoping to see some nice creative responses, because why not? Okay, spoilers are coming, so scores are not going to be put up. So Liquid Mana currently at 1, sort of currently at 2. And this is a best of 5, so this could be the last game. It could not be the last game, who knows? It sort of wins it. It is the last. If Liquid Mana wins it, then we're going to move on to game number 5. So interesting enough, we have a double gas coming out here for, for Liquid Mana. But that is after the expansion, so gonna potentially see some either an early robotics facility or a Stargate. There was a double expansion for sort of, so that was actually before the spawning pool. So definitely interesting to note. And it looks like this probe about to spot pretty much everything. Now I don't think he spotted the expansion here. It's just a bit of a mis misdirection of it. But based on timings, he's probably going to understand that that's exactly what's going on. If you... In terms of timings, by the way. If you start off with a hatchery first, and then a spawning pool. Your spawning pool will complete, with perfect timings of course, at 2 minutes 05. If you don't see that completing at 2 minutes 05, there's something different going on. If you start off with a pool first, I believe it completes at about 1.55. And then you've got the hatchery completing at about 2.05, roughly like that. It's not exactly sure of the, the exact timings of it, but it's very close to that. Now you saw there that about 2 minutes 05 was when that spawning pool actually started. So Mana probably knew that this is exactly what was going on, despite the fact that he did not scout this. He does actually see that there is creep there at this point. So knowing your timings and knowing what how to read the situation is a very crucial part of StarCraft 2 because sometimes scouting is not possible. Sometimes you just cannot get it no matter what. So it looks like two adepts, pretty standard here. Moving on out, gonna probably try to do a bit of harassment with that. Metabolic boost is still a fair bit away, so he might get a few drone kills before that completes. And it does look like Mana actually deciding to go for a pylon outside of his main base. This is meaning that he's gonna go for an expansion very shortly. And as I thought earlier as well, he is going for that Stargate. So double gas at the start, another thing that you might want to keep note of. If you see a double gas out of a Protoss player very, very early, it means that he is using that for either a Stargate or a robotics facility. Okay, he's actually cancelled off these two adepts. He doesn't want to lose them. So obviously, pulling them back just a little bit. Metabolic boost about to complete. The Oracle is the choice of weapon here for Liquid Mana. And there we go. The third base is now going up. What is this? This is a pylon. Now these Zerglings are going to run by and they are indeed going to spot that, so he's going to be aware that there's an expansion coming out. Now these Overlords just being very peculiar here, just to scout what exactly is going on. He hasn't seen the Stargate, but of course he will be very, very shortly aware of it. Now I wonder, did he see that? Now he did put up a Spore Crawler, so I assume that he definitely did see that. He probably spotted it with the Overlord right here. The Oracle now on the way. And let's just follow that a little bit, see what it does. Probably just going to try to pick off a few drones. He does have 
80 energy on this thing. Looks like robotics facility is on the way also for mana. Now he is sniping off a few drones here. And this is a perfect one for him. He's managed to snipe off six. That is a good trade. I mean, six will probably make it about equal. If he manages to get eight or nine or something like that, then at that point he is doing so, so good. And you might think, okay, so the Oracle doesn't actually cost that much. Why do you need to have eight or nine drones destroyed with it? I'll tell you why. To get an Oracle this early, before the Zerg player is able to do much about it, you have to sacrifice mining time, you have to sacrifice minerals and gas to make the, the actual Stargate, and you also have to spend extra minerals on the second gas. So the, the mining time lost is the three workers that you send onto the second gas. The minerals themselves, of course, is the fact that you're not mining off the minerals and the fact that the, uh, the refinery itself costs some minerals. So that with considering all the time lost and pretty much everything, you know, mixed into that, I estimate that about eight or nine drones is what a good trade for the Oracle is. Otherwise, if he doesn't manage to kill anything with it, then yeah, the scouting information is useful, but is it the best use of the of those resources? Because that's a lot of resources to spend on scouting. He would have very, very well been doing well there if he just used an observer. Okay, so mana actually breaking down these rocks himself. Usually it's the Zerg player that does this for you. But it does suggest that he might be going for an expansion soon. Now it doesn't look like sort of actually actually selected this unit during the passing of the Phoenixes. So I honestly I don't think that this has been spotted. So Phoenix is on the way. Gonna be interesting to see if he's just using them for overlords or what. Because that could very well be the case. I really like the placement of those Zerglings. He, he was able to scout out when exactly his opponent was expanding, and he was able to scout out exactly when his opponent was moving out. I love the amount of blue that's on this right now. Zer the Hydralis looks so badass in blue. It's pretty damn awesome. Now these Phoenixes probably not being used to their best strength. He should be around here in the back, just destroying a bunch of overlords, trying to supply block his opponent. Oh, look at that. So a bunch of Zerglings over here. I think they actually destroyed that, that Zealot that was there a while ago. So he just wants to basically know exactly when that Nexus is coming down. Of course, knowledge is power in this game. And if you know when your opponent is expanding, you're going to be doing very well, very well. Now, this is actually something really cool. A lot of Zerg players these days, they don't focus that much on creeping. I think that creeping is one of the most crucial things you can do as a Zerg player, simply because of the amount of vision that it gives you. It's absolutely huge. It is ridiculously important. And look at this army supply. Or not army supply, this army composition. Absolutely beautiful. He does have Hydras, he has Lurkers. And ooh, here we go. The engage is coming on here. Will he snipe off this? Oh, he might actually snipe it off. There we go. Oracle has been destroyed. The vision is down on these Lurkers. So they're going to be in a little bit of trouble if they get out of position. And it's a tense moment. This could be the most important part of the game. Does manage to... Cancel off a hatchery here. It's Zergly run by. Not doing a whole lot. Might just deny the space. Is he going to deny it? No, he just runs by and he just lets it go like that. Now, what is this doing? Now, the engage here. The Zerglings just puck shotting away at these Zells. They are going to be able to clean them up. There is enough of them there. Let's have a quick look at the units lost tab. Looks like seven drones for one probe, so no significant eco economic damage has been done so far. And that is a lot of zealots. That is a lot of zealots that are being warped in here. Wow. That's a lot of gateways as well. So obviously a very gateway heavy build right now. He has nine gateways in total. Two robotics facility. He has a robotic support bay. So that's interesting. He might get disruptors out. I 
Oh, he already has two out. That's pretty cool. Now there is a spy. Oh, look at all the tech that's that sort of is getting right now. He's got an Ultra's Cavern. He's got a Nidus Canal. He's got a Spire. He's got himself level two ground weapons. He's got level three Carapace, and he's got Crackling upgrades. And on top of that, he just threw Chitin's Plating and level three. Actually, that was already up. Never mind. Chitin's Plating being thrown down as well. This is absolutely huge. The amount of resources he just spent on getting himself tech is massive. Obviously, if mana attacks right now, as you can see, the, the army supply slightly favoring him, he'll probably come out on top. But if all of those upgrades complete, all of those buildings complete, and the tech starts to roll out, at that point, the Zerg army is going to be very, very dominant. This is really nice here. I like this play. Bringing a Zealot into the tight choke here and just blocking off the Zergians from running straight into the mineral line. There's a lot of Zealots here, but they will be cleaned up. There is obviously Crackling Upgrade done at this point. There's level 2 Carapace, level 1 attack. So these Zerglings are just absolutely ridiculously strong right now. And look at the amount of damage that they do. They might even be able to snipe off these overcharged pylons. Honestly, I would not be surprised. And look, even the, the even right now. So there we go. The, the huge engage here with the main armies as well. Is there going to be a few yoinks? Oh, I do see vipers. I see vipers. Are we going to see a yoink? He needs to do that on those disruptors. That is the most crucial thing. Oh, a nice drop in here. Zealot's been war warped in or warped in. Oh, wow. He's going to get that Ultras Cavern. That is huge. Gets the Ultras Cavern down. Unfortunately for him, there are a few Ultras on the map already. His main army backs off, but the, the harassment did pay off there. Managing to take down the Ultras Cavern, which means no more Ultras reinforcements. Now, on the other hand, he does have Chitin's Blading and level 3 about to complete. And he has also a greater spire on the way so gonna see broodlord and ultra's composition does look like an iris network is coming out right now but this is huge purification of us going down there's three of them in total actually missing with all but one that is a little bit unfortunate and there we go the nidus network coming out what is he gonna do is he gonna load up his units no he loads up a few and then he backs off with the rest of them so there's drops going down pretty much everywhere at this point what is he going to do with these zealots? I honestly don't think he's going to get a whole lot done. Oh, there we go. Another, another Nidus Canal coming down here. Is he going to stream all of his units out there? Oh, look at these zealots. Doing a bit of damage here. Nidus Canal. He's actually bringing out Ar an Archon here. That's going to be a, a bit of a late Archon considering there's Ultralights coming out. Hello. And there we go. Starting to work away at this. Ultralisks. There's three of them in total inside this base right now. Are they going to clean this whole base up? I do believe so. All of these drones are absolutely toast at this point. Possibly going to snipe out the Nexus as well. There is just one measly Zergling attacking there. That's nothing important. And this Nexus, there is no stopping this right now. The Nexus is gone. Does look like Twilight Council. Stargate and the Forge also getting underpowered. Oh my god, this is a crucial, crucial shutdown here. Look at that. That level 2 weapons for ground units is just so close to completing. He needs to... <laughs> sort of, and his love of Nidus's, yes indeed. So this, this is absolutely huge right now. This upgrade is getting delayed by so much. A beautiful Nidus here from Sort of, I have to say. And in terms of army supply, it does look like mana is just slightly ahead. His worker count is a little bit down, but that is of course because he just lost the base. What that does give him, however, is a bit more space to build attacking units. So he could potentially max out his army right now with the 50 workers, so 149 supply of army. And then he would have a greater army than the sort of. There we go, a few more ultras being dropped in here. Now this Archon free reign in the back of the line here. I do think they need to focus him down before he actually destroys these two ultralisks. Oh, it's gonna be close. Ultras are now destroyed and that is pretty much that for them. Archon doing so much damage here, just ridiculous. And Nidus Canal is just getting killed off left and right. I mean, he is shutting down mana. Mana is in a lot of trouble trying to do, uh, trying to survive against this. But I don't know how much resources he should be spending into all of this. Look at this, we've got four Tempests right now. Two more being produced as well. He's sniping out that Nidus Canal fairly slowly, despite the fact that those are four huge. <laughs> Not the Ultras. Okay, I I'm going to stop looking at the stream because uh, as much as I want to respond to you guys, I do need to focus on the game itself. So this is actually quite nice here. He is going to be able to shut down all these buildings. 
And is there an observer nearby? Let's have a quick look at the units tab. Is there any observers on the map? There is two. So one is here and one is actually right above them now. So finally getting that cleaned up. And it looks like he's continued with the production of Tempest right now. I mean, he's got, what, a total of four already? Two more being made. That's a total of six. Almost missed this engagement anyways. Now there's a lot of Broodlords here as well. Look at all those. That is a total of seven Broodlords. Broodlord Ultralisks. Lurkers. Corruptors. What else could you possibly want? And of course we have the Master Yoinks over here. The Vipers. There's engagements going down everywhere. Zerglings streaming in. There's Overlords here. Just probably for another Nidus. Is he going to get another Nidus? I honestly don't know. And these Zerglings just going to town on this mineral line. Absolutely cleaning it up. I think that this is starting to very quickly favor, sort of. And this huge army. And that, this is something that... The, I suppose it would be similar to the Prolos Death Ball, that, Death Ball that we had back in Wings of Liberty and Heart of the Swarm. Unfortunately, the Colossus is no longer part of that, so I think that Protoss are a little bit underpowered right now in the very, very late game. Oh, nice, you ain't going down here. Gonna be sniping out one of those Tempests. And Purification Nova's not quite reaching any of the units. And all of those Corruptors just absolutely wrecking the Tempest. I don't think there's that much that that army can do. I think this is going to be cleaned up very, very shortly. Nidus Worm coming down. I think this is just the reinforcements, Nidus Worm. Lurkers in the back doing so, so much damage. Look at that. There's eight of them in total. Beautiful play here from Sort of. And I have to say, this is the first series of Sort of that I'm casting. I haven't seen him in the other ones yet. I only casted um, Nation Wars and there was something before that as well. I can't quite think of it right now. And I didn't see him in any of those tournaments. So pretty nice to see him here. And definitely a player to be keeping an eye on. Sort of takes game number four. This brings our series to four, three against one rather in favor of Sort of. And he takes the series. Very well played here, I have to say. And that is it for our game between Sort of and Mana, a best of five, which resulted in a three to one in favor of Sort of. Very good play here with the Nidus Worms and as well with the Broodlord Ultralisk combo. Hope you've enjoyed this game. Of course, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to see more. And our question of the series before I leave you here is if you could buff one StarCraft 2 unit, which unit would it be? And of course, if you want to say why, you're very welcome to as well. Leave that in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next series, which is going to be another game from the round of 32. Good luck. Take care, and I'll see you guys there.